The two questions I get the most in my day-to-day -day life are, Andrew Stocek, what are the 10 best matches in WWE slash WWF history? Which is closely followed by, what does Adam's hair smell like? Well, the first one I got tired of people asking, so I decided to write them all out. For the second question, the best I can describe it would be like if Prince Albert's back hair came to life and put on some nice cologne and then suddenly died inside of Jim Duggan's Speedo somehow. So maybe my list of best matches is weird. Spoiler alert, I guess I don't have Steamboat Savage on here, or Razor Ramon versus Shawn Michaels in a ladder match, and I was threatened with suspension from what culture if I put on Terry Reynolds versus the Cat Thong Stingface match at SummerSlam 2000 as my number four pick of all time. But that's neither here nor there, so let's just get to my list. Here are the top 10 matches I feel are the best in WWE history. Number 10, the February 7th, 2000 Raw main event. I know I said my list was kind of weird, but just please hang with me, don't go. Why don't I say? <laughs> The Radicals were making their second ever appearance on Raw and they began the night by turning heel on Mick Foley. A main event was set up with Perry Saturn, pre Moppy, Dean Malenko, pre James Bond, and Chris Benoit, pre... Whatever happened to that guy? They were teamed up with Triple H and X-Pac to battle Mick Foley, Too Cool, Rikishi, and The Rock. It was so weird, but so awesome. More so than the invasion ever did. This truly felt like WCW versus the WWF. And the crowd was amazing. Scotty Tuhati and Grandmaster Sex, they received the pops of their career every time they tagged in. The match only lasted 10 minutes, but it was among the most exciting 10 minutes in the history of Raw. The main event drew an unbelievable 8.1 rating, and it was a brilliant way to make all the former WCW wrestlers look like stars in their new home, something the WWE hasn't really done all that often. Just ask TDP, Booker T, Lance Storm, Hugh Morris, etc, etc, etc. Number 9, Ric Flair vs. Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 24. I've never cried while watching a wrestling match, believe it or not. Well, besides Triple H vs. Scott Steiner at Royal Rumble 2003, but that was for different reasons. However, Ric Flair vs. Shawn Michaels at Mania 24 had me grabbing for the nearest box of Kleenex, just in case. Flair had been such an afterthought in WWE during his last couple years, but his showdown with the Heartbreak Kid showed he still had something left in the tank. In the storyline, Vince McMahon determined that if Flair lost, he'd have to hang up his robes for good. Which makes you kind of wonder why he doesn't do that to Roman Reigns right now, since he doesn't really like him all that much. Anyways, for 20 minutes, the two put on a classic. Sure, Flair was older and less mobile, but he still understood the psychology of a match better than anyone. The finish saw HBK mouth, I love you, to his friend, right before kicking him in the face and putting him out to pasture like old Yeller. Still, it was a beautiful, bittersweet moment, and it was the perfect ending for Ric Flair. Until he went to TNA and fought Abyss. Number 8, Bret Hart versus the British Bulldog, SummerSlam 92. The Bulldog and Bret Hart were put in the impossible position at SummerSlam, because they were booked to go on right after Tatanka and the Berserker. Somehow, someway, they put on an even better match. Bulldog was never quite a world-class worker, but damn, did Bret Hart make him look like one at that show. While bigger names in The Ultimate Warrior and Randy Savage battled it out for the WWF title in front of 78,000 fans at Wembley Stadium, it was Hart and the Dog who stole the show that night, in a match for the Inter continental title. At nearly 26 minutes, Bulldog beat Hart when he blocked his attempt at a sunset flip and sat on him. It wasn't devastating, but it was kind of cool. It was pure power versus the best technical wrestler in the world, with two brothers in law going at it. Number 7, The Rock versus Hulk Hogan, WrestleMania 18. LeBron James would destroy Michael Jordan now in a game of one-on-one, -on -one, and Tyson Fury could beat George Foreman in a matter of seconds. But because wrestling is a work of fiction, they can present two top stars from different generations and make them look like equals. It's why Sylvester Stallone was able to hold his own in Rocky Balboa, and how an Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull, Harrison Ford was able to win the battle against osteoporosis. At WrestleMania 18, a true dream match went down when Hogan and The Rock went one-on-one. -on -one. Hogan hadn't stepped foot in a WWE ring for over eight and a half years, and even though he was gone all that time, he still felt like a WWF guy. It was good to see him home. By no means was the match a technical classic, but it was better than it had any right to be. It was basically the rabid crowd that made this match for me. Hogan was the heel in the NWO, but was getting all the cheers, and The Rock was getting booed out of the building. It was an amazing reaction and spectacle that we will probably never see again. Yo, Adrian! I did it! Number 6, Randy Orton vs. Mick Foley Backlash 2004. It's a beautiful thing watching someone become a star in professional wrestling, and at Backlash 2004, Randy Orton became one. The legend killer had been battling Mick Foley for a year. He threw him down steps, he had his friend Batista powerbomb him through a table, and most insultingly of all, Randy didn't return Mick's DVD collection of the Gilmore Girls that he borrowed him. This was personal, and things finally came to a head the month after WrestleMania. At Backlash, Foley and Orton battled in a hardcore match for the Intercontinental title. They threw everything they had at each other. At one point in the match, Randy Randy Orton got a barbed wire bat leg dropped onto his crotch, which I think is how Hulk Hogan beat Andre the Giant at WrestleMania 3. It was a bloody match, the kind that you can't see in WWE anymore, because they'd have to stop the match like 47 times to clean up all the blood. The ending was brilliant because we all thought Foley was going to win because Randy had been such a jerk to him all this time, but Orton won at Foley's own game. It made him a star right away, and four months later he became the youngest WWE champion in the company's history, but that's mainly because Brock Lesnar left the company and they wanted somebody else on the record books. Number 5, Shawn Michaels vs. The Undertaker, WrestleMania 20. 
25. The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels are two legends that just can't get along. Michaels cost Undertaker the WWF title at SummerSlam 97, and in return, Taker later nearly ended Michaels' career when he back body dropped him onto a casket. That's the exact same thing that happened to me and my father, which is why we don't talk anymore. That's your brain trying to comprehend its own stupidity. While the two had a lot of great matches throughout their career, somehow their best one and one of the best matches ever went down when they were both in their 40s. The two became better, smarter workers as they age, and knew how to work a crowd like no one else. In Mania 25, it felt like the first real threat to the streak in years, and Michaels made the idea of it ending more plausible with every little bit of offense. Let's not forget that Taker also nearly killed himself at one point in the match, and somehow went another 15 minutes. In the end, both connected with their finishing moves, but the darkness won. Taker stood tall, the crowd gave them a huge standing ovation, and after witnessing this war, Jim Ross had this to say, I feel like we've just seen heaven. What a match. As a wrestling fan, who could ask for anything more? Number 4, Shawn Michaels vs. Kurt Angle, WrestleMania 21. Yes, more Shawn Michaels here, and I'm not even that big of a fan. In fact, I will never forgive him for the DX reunion where they kept plugging things and made fun of short people. And anyway, perhaps the two best wrestlers of the past 25 years locked up for the first time at Mania 21, and it was amazing. It was like watching something we could have never even dreamed of seeing. Like James Bond getting in a tickle fight with Jabba the Hutt. That's not weird to have dreamed of that, right? Anyways, Angle and Michaels were on separate brands at the time, which made the dream match even more special because they'd had so little interaction with each other. But once the bell rang, it was like they were old-time dance partners knowing how to create the perfect two-step. The match was a slow build that kept building and building into an intense affair filled with ankle locks and sweet chin music's galore. In the end, Michaels was locked in and had no choice but to tap, otherwise he'd have his ankle broken off forever. Lucky for us, he lived to fight another day, though if he hadn't, we would have been saved from the DX reunion, so now I'm kind of torn. Number 3, Bret Hart vs. Steve Austin, WrestleMania 13. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be took on the best wrestler on the planet next to the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be, and his name was Steve Austin, and he was ready for a breakout role. Austin had been looked over in WCW and given a crappy ringmaster gimmick in the WWF, which is only slightly better than the Chili McFreeze moniker he was offered. Austin 316 says I just chilled your McFreeze. He doesn't have that much of an accent, that was terrible. Anyways, the match started with Hart as a babyface and Austin as the rebellious heel, but by the end, the roles had reversed. They went through a beautiful Beautiful and bloody affair that saw both men test each other in ways they'd never been. The brilliant ending saw Austin turn into a hero because through his crimson red mask and screams of agony, he refused to give up. He passed out and it was super badass and soon it put the Texas Rattlesnake on the course to becoming the biggest star in the history of the business. Number 2, Hulk Hogan vs. The Ultimate Warrior, WrestleMania 6. We'd seen Hulk Hogan slay monsters like King Kong Bundy, Andre the Giant, and Tiny Lister, who had magical powers because he got himself out of the movie No Holds Bar into a WWF ring. But Hulk's greatest challenge, no, his ultimate challenge, went down at WrestleMania 6. It was a fascinating showdown as it was the first WWF pay-per-view to feature two top baby faces going head-to-head -head in the main event. It was impossible to confidently think that either man would win. Luckily, it was Pat Patterson who was the architect behind the match, and he built a masterpiece, one that is worthy of belonging in any museum. Well, both wrestlers were limited, especially Warrior. They worked together well and took the Toronto audience on a ride. The ending saw the unthinkable happen. Hogan lost cleanly for the first time since his WWF run started six years earlier. Their Mania match was as great as their Halloween Havoc match was f***ing terrible. I wish there was another way to say that, but there isn't, and I'm sorry. And the greatest match in WWE slash WWF history, the WrestleMania 20 main event. The best match in history is one I'll probably never watch again. Shawn Michaels versus Triple H versus Chris Benoit had everything you look for in a classic. Dramatic near falls, incredible athleticism, and real life genuine emotion behind it. Benoit was one of the best wrestlers in the world, but was always looked over for bigger, stronger, less talented muscle heads. He just didn't have the body or larger than life personality that McMahon goes for. It was the way he built his business, but at WrestleMania 20, somehow Benoit found himself in the main event of the show. Afterwards, Benoit and Guerrero hugging in the center of the ring is one of the most touching moments in wrestling and yep I'll probably never watch it again but those memories of watching it when it happened will always be with me well those are my top 10 matches in WWE history tell me how wrong I am or how Rikishi does belong on this list in the comments below thanks for watching everyone and follow me at Andrew Sochek on Twitter if that's your thing and stay tuned to what culture for more videos